Yo, yo, yo. What up? Sorry, guys. Man, I'm moving slow this morning. I'm sorry. It's one of those days, yo, man. Yo, it's yo, one yo, of those yo. days. You shake weight jam. <laughs> <laughs> Booty, baby. Booty, baby. <laughs> what up, ferret? Sorry, I know you guys were waiting for a second, dude. It's a slow morning for me, man. I'm turtle this morning, dude. I'm turtled. Um, what's up, everybody? How you doing? What up? What up? Yo, yo, yo. What's up, buddy? Um, man. Yo, me too, dude. I'm excited to dive in here and see what the game's all about, man. Yeah, it's good. Hopefully, it'll be good. Hopefully, it'll be good. Um, the uh, the random mode stuff's still broken. Um, uh, I mean, it's still it's working with just the seven TV emotes, but it's broken, dude. I had to reach out to Stream Elements, and they don't know what's going on either. <laughs> uh, they uh, they helped me get it working again the other day. But literally yesterday, I had to reach back out because, dude, I tried a bunch of troubleshooting uh, last night uh, on my own. And, uh, dude, I cannot get it fixed. And so I reached back out and they don't know what's going on either. They had me try a bunch of other stuff. and It's just broken, dude. And uh, they're like, uh, we're going to have to push this up. We're going to have to elevate this. <laughs> so, so I don't know that they've seen this happen before, maybe. Uh, at least the person I was working with hadn't. So... For now, I guess everybody just gets an increased chance to uh, win rando mode. You know what I mean? Lucky for you guys, dude. Lucky for you guys. So, rando mode's still in effect. It's just not populating the um, normal Twitch emotes. Uh, um, for some reason, it's only populating and outputting our seven TV emotes, which is really, really weird. I don't know why. But... We'll figure it out at some point. I'm collaborating with Stream Elements right now. They're figuring it out. There it is, baby. There it is. What's up, Caleb? So uh, we got the news today for the 14th of July. We'll dive into that first, and then we'll hop in there and try out uh, Exo Primal today for the first time and see what that's all about, man. So um, on that note, if anybody is wanting to, you know, try out Exo Primal, obviously, you know. The way this works is the uh, long-term community members and uh, especially mods and uh, VIPs get priority for play and stuff. But if you're interested in playing together, you know, the game is on Game Pass. So if you already have a subscription, then download, install, and uh, let's try the game out. You know what I mean? Davey, what up, buddy? What's going on, man? Let's get into this, dude. Let's get into this news segment, and then let's go play some games. So, we've got uh, Hotline Miami, dude. We're listening to some Hotline Miami vibes this morning. So, uh, I don't know. If you're interested, go check out the game and and get a uh, get a look at the uh, the OST as well. Okay. Why is my? Oh, there we go. Let's get that where that's supposed to be. Man, I'm sluggish this morning. We'll go ahead and pause the music. Let's get into the gaming news. See what we got here. We're going to continue to get this FTC stuff until this is all finished. You know what I mean? Um, it's really right now, it's the it's at the the uh, point of the UK stuff, you know. The uh, UK regulated, uh, regulator, regulation authority is really the one that's uh, got the, the obstacle, the only obstacle left here, so... Seems good. Seems good. More Final Fantasy XII, Davey? Nice, dude. Nice. You must be enjoying it, man. That's great. Um, that's one of those those uh, that's one of those things. Had um, more people started reacting to the code red, other people would have followed suit. But because nobody else did nobody else reacted it's one of those it's one of those like uh it's it, there, there's like psychological studies about that kind of um 
those kinds of behaviors when it comes to groups of people and the way that works. So that's probably the way it would have happened. You know what I mean? If there had been more people that reacted to the code red, more people probably would have followed suit and done the same thing. But because nobody reacted, everybody just kept doing what they were doing. It's a huge part of uh, psychology studies, actually. There are a lot of different areas in that. Oh, yeah, fair, yeah. But that's scary that nobody reacted to a uh, fire alarm, you know. It sounds like it was probably, hopefully, a false alarm um, since nobody reacted, you know. Yeah. Mm. Um, Microsoft, I, I like Reuters, dude. Reuters is one of the big, uh, last few remaining, like, good, independent news sources, dude. Maybe, maybe so. Yeah, could have been, could have been. Still one of those things that probably shouldn't be taken too lightly, though. Somebody calls a code red out, you know what I mean? It's supposed to be a, a fire... You know, I don't know. My, I, I mean, I tend to be one of those people that's like, it's it's usually better to err on the side of caution. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not like they could, they could, uh, you know, get you in trouble for reacting to something got called over the intercom or something that's supposed to indicate there's a fire going on or something, you know? So, I don't know. But I know no, like nobody wants to get behind and work either. So that's probably why nobody reacted, right? Everybody's like, I got to get this done. <laughs> the fire can burn it down, but I'm finishing this work. <laughs> uh, let's read this real quick. Microsoft Activision waste sale of some UK cloud gaming rights. They want it. So th I think there's, there's this is kind of a time critical, critical situation here, right? So the FTC is... Uh, basically trying to refute the uh the call from the the recent um you know what was the name of the judge i can't remember right now but basically the judge leaned in favor of microsoft said that it's not anti-competitive microsoft should be able to proceed with the the acquisition of um Activision Blizzard, right? But what's happening is the FTC does not agree, and the Federal Trade Commission is trying to um, basically go back in and say that they, they deserve a retrial on this, right? But until they're granted a retrial, basically there's a small window, right? There's a small window for uh, Microsoft to go ahead and close this deal. But they can't really close the deal until the uh, the UK side of this is finished. But from what we understand, they've got like maybe through Monday or Tuesday to kind of get this done. So they're really trying to figure out a way to get this UK, the UK side of this figured out really quickly so they can go ahead and finish this acquisition before the FTC can actually go ahead and get granted their retrial, you know. <laughs> So there's a weird situation going on right now. At least that's the impression I'm getting of kind of TLDR what's going down here. We'll read a bit more about it this morning and make sure we, we're aware of what's happening, what the timeline is right now for what needs to get done and, and what Microsoft's trying to do here, okay? That's not gaming news, Wick. You're in the wrong channel, apparently. Um Right, right, yeah, Kayla, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, it sounds a bit like the Walmart I've heard about, yeah. Hey, dudes? What are hey, dudes? I know. <laughs> I know, I'm just trolling Wick, Ferret. Ferret. Come on, man. <laughs> Their shoes. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. That's what I figured, but I've never heard of them before. Hmm. Nice. Okay. Sriracha is not orange. That's wrong. Sriracha is red, but nice try. Maybe you're colorblind. And if so, then that's okay. But if you're not colorblind, then that's not acceptable. You're not wrong there. You're not wrong there. Without Sriracha and my snacks, the stream wouldn't last 30 minutes. You're not wrong. You're not wrong there. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I will not deny that. Not even. Yeah. If I don't have uh, coffee right away and I don't have snacks to uh, for the entire time I'm gaming, yeah, we wouldn't last very long. That's for sure. Yeah. You heard people say sriracha tastes like soap? Those people just don't have good palates, dude. That's all that is. Those people just don't have good palates. Maybe those people have had too much soap in their mouths. How do those people know what soap tastes like? Why are they eating soap? That's the big question. Why do those people know what soap tastes like? <laughs> right. Thanks, Wick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, not everybody needs to be a fan of it, but... Oh, cilantro. Yeah, I've heard that same thing before. I think cilantro, t I like cilantro. Here's the thing, cilantro, cilantro is very overpowering. It is a very, very, very potent, very pungent taste, man. Um, and, and uh, or, or herb, you know, cilantro is. I don't think it tastes like soap. Not that I would know why, what soap tastes like. <laughs> but um you know it's uh it's very good in in many many dishes and uh but you know it's not something you're just gonna sit there and eat either and if you put too much of it dude it can ruin a dish absolutely <laughs> hey dude i'll <laughs> i had uh you know there could be reasoning why I know <laughs> what soap tastes like behind that same kind of sentiment. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's quite possible that I got threatened very often with having my mouth washed out with soap as a child. <laughs> It's quite possible. So, you know, maybe that's why those people know what soap tastes like. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not one of those forgettable tastes, you know. <laughs> you, you, you always kind of remember what soap tastes like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's not good. It's not good. But I don't think cilantro tastes like soap, personally. That's just me, though. Cloud gaming platform and stream arcade brings over 1,000 retro games, dude. Let's take a peek at that. Is this the same? This is probably the same thing. I think uh, AntStream is, is uh, accessible through there. Is that what that is? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, whatever, dude. So, so that'll be part of that. Oh, here we go. Okay. Stray Gods has changed its release date to avoid Baldur's Gate 3. That makes sense. Okay. All right, Kayla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope work goes well. We'll probably see you later, okay? Yeah, I hope you're feeling good. okay, man. I know you've had a lot of issues here lately with the illness and stuff, man. I hope you're feeling better. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, let's get into this. Yeah, we got both those up. I don't think we'll need them both, but... We got that up.
Lots of games reduced by 90% in the Xbox Ultimate Game Sale. We've got that up too. Yep. It's all over the place, dude. We're just going to be saturated with those articles today. What? I didn't think there was anybody in the world that didn't know what the original Donkey Kong game was, dude. <sighs> Insane. Wow. Yeah, dude. Definitely needs rectifying, bro. For sure. Wow. See, that right there is just a perfect example of why we have to preserve video gaming history, dude. You know what I mean? There are people out there that have not seen original Donkey Kong. Right? Is that even worth looking at, Wick? I see the title of it. Is it? Is it? I'll read it. I'll read it. We'll see what we get out of that. No, you're just teasing. This is the this is that that news site I don't like reading out of anyways because it's always translated to English and it's so hard to read quite often. It's trans they're always translated super poorly, dude. Game News 24. It's so hard to read these things, man. Yeah, it doesn't actually look worth, dude, to be honest. Yeah, sports news. <laughs> right on. So behind in just about uh, anything technology to the point where I, I bought their first cordless. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, to be fair, it's like how many people know that that's where Mario came from? You know what I mean? Like that was Mario and Donkey Kong. How many people know that? You know? How many people that are actually like gamers, modern gamers, know that? Right? That, that that's like that's that's Mario in Donkey Kong, the original Donkey Kong game, right? How many people actually realize that? Or have even seen the original Donkey Kong to understand that like Donkey Kong was a character with Mario in it before even Super Mario Brothers and like and Donkey Kong, anything else, uh, uh, you know, like, after that. I think that's the thing that's important that, that, you know, we talk about, like, video preserving video game history and the things that, that people don't understand necessarily that, that maybe are even of a younger generation, you know. Um, and I'm not, like, bagging on, on even anybody that doesn't know that, but I think that the importance of that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, dude, yeah. Well, I mean, I'll be honest, man. I'm, I'm really, I feel fortunate to be, to have grown up with video games the way I grew up with video games, you know, and to have grown up with technology the way I grew up with technology and to have seen it evolve into what it was into what it is now, you know, I feel fortunate for that. Um, and I think that's, it's actually one of those, that it's a perfect example, you know, like Donkey Kong, because um, I don't think that either, because I don't think he was actually called Mario in Donkey Kong, was he? Yeah, I don't even think he had a name in it yet, or he was called something else. Um, I don't even remember the story behind it. Yeah, he was called Jumpman. Dude, he was called Jumpman. Um, Mario first appeared in 1981 in the Donkey Kong game for arcade as a carpenter named Jumpman, but he got renamed into Mario, right? 
And a lot of people, I don't even think a lot of people really understand that or know that, you know, that aren't, you know, longtime gaming fans or that, that maybe don't even realize that like Donkey Kong was an arcade game before it was anything else. Uh, yeah, yeah, I knew it wasn't Mario, but I couldn't remember if he had a name or if it was something else, but I knew it wasn't Mario. But yeah, he was called Jumpman, right? So Mario's original name is actually Jumpman. <laughs> you know, there's a little bit of video gaming history for you. Yeah. Um, but it's this kind of thing that like, uh, I think this just shows the importance of video gaming history, right? It's, it, that's a cool thing that you brought up, dude. I think that it's a uh, Went from carpenter to plumber too. Yeah, 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 yep, yep. You're right. Um, it's important to preserve the history of video games, man. So, you know, even if you have the knowledge, being able to go back and take a look at it and see what it was and experience it and play it and stuff, that's an important thing. And I think it's even more important for, I'll be honest, I think it's more important, not just for us as gaming fans and enthusiasts, but for developers i think for for developers to be able to go back and and see and feel and and get a taste of where gaming has evolved from and why especially the more notable titles that have been a huge catalyst for the evolution of gaming um i think those are the the i think it's important for for developers today to to know where it came from you know that's a good example dude I'm tired of this gaming Bible stuff, dude, with the Steam free games. Yeah, that is a good trivia right there. One second. Oh, sorry, guys. What is Naraka Blade Point? Don't sleep on the new Battle Royale game dropping on PS5. This game has already been out, right? But now that it's hitting PS5, it's going free to play. I think is kind of the play here. But let's take a quick peek. Make sure we know what's going on there. <laughs> Bro, what? Sociopathic Destiny 2 player to pay Bungie 373,000 pounds in damages. Dude, this is why I love Bungie. Bungie does not screw around. If you are going to come at their company in any form or fashion, be it their actual company or any of their assets, titles, games, anything like that, you better be prepared for the repercussions, dude, because they're going to slam you hard. They're going to get you, dude. <clears throat> Let's read about this. They they are full, fully invested, dude, in destroying anybody that has any intention of harming their business, dude, in any form or fashion. Yeah, there you go. Almost half a million, dude. Almost half a million. Nice. Nice. Thanks, Ferret. Yeah, we'll read that. I love seeing Bungie just rip people apart, dude. Rip businesses. Like, dude, what did we see here recently? It was, <clears throat> what, like a 16 million and a, I don't know what was it was close to like four, 30 between 30 and 40 million or something like that. I think close to like 40 40 million maybe a little bit more than that in total that they won in the lawsuits over two um hacker slash cheat sites or whatever 
uh, that were making cheats for Bungie or, or for uh, Destiny, right? They won lawsuits against both those companies here recently. Do they go after everybody? And I absolutely love it, dude. It's so good. Looks like Overwatch League summer stage qualifiers are starting today. Could you guys hear that? Did you hear that little bleep? That blip? Okay. Okay. You like that? Did you like it? It was cute. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I am a violent sneezer. There's no flipping way. There, I'm a violent sneezer, dude. I can't help it. I can't even hold them in, dude. I can't. Like I see, like my wa my wife doesn't like to sneeze. She likes to hold her sneezes in. Like there's she and she'll be like, I sneeze. I'm like, you didn't sneeze. Well, that wasn't a sneeze. I feel like if I if I hold a sneeze in at all, dude, at all, it 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 makes me feel terrible, dude. And I'm not like trying to sneeze all over the place. Like I cover my mouth and stuff and stuff. But dude, if I need to sneeze, dude, I gotta let it rip. I just gotta let it go. So no. <laughs> that wouldn't be my sneeze, dude. I got a little elf in here sneezing or something, dude. <laughs> you get sneezing attacks? Oh, really? Oh, that sounds terrible, dude. Dude, that's the way it feels. Yeah, that's the way it feels, Wick. Yeah, yeah. Like, I got to let it rip, dude. Conform to your genre with new specialty control freaks. What is this, dude? All right, we'll take a look at that. We'll see what that is. Looks like uh, Netflix has Sonic Prime Dash available now. Oh, yeah, it's really, really gross, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I don't like that, dude. I don't like seeing people pop their eyes out of their sockets, dude. Like, watching somebody pop a, like, fake eye out, no problem, dude. That doesn't bother me at all. But seeing somebody be able to, like, dislodge their actual eyeballs out of their sockets, I don't like that. <laughs> There's something about that dude that just hits me the wrong way. I don't, I don't dig that very much. <laughs> New Atlas Fallen gameplay video, okay. There's there's some hype around this. Yeah, okay, dude. Yeah, I mean, is that a surprise? We've been talking about this. I really, uh, you know, I don't. I I think that my est my guesstimation, my guesstimation here is that the Switch Two will be announced within the next probably six to nine months and that it'll probably release right before the holiday season next year. That's my kind of guess. If we get it earlier, cool, but that's my guess right now is that uh, it'll launch right before holiday season next year. Up to diamond, uh, diamond five rank on Farlight. Nice, dude. Nice. Hooked, are you, dude? Uh, I mean, you know, I'm not. It, it's it's something I'm okay with jumping into every once in a while. 
it's it's uh I, you know i much prefer like an fps but it's if the game feels pretty good for what it is uh it's i, I like it much more than i liked uh something like uh flipping fortnite you know i don't know i don't know why fortnite had so much crazy like movement like when that with the hammers and all that crazy crap i like the fact that you get a little bit of some movement ability the, the gunfight feels pretty good they've got some cool like uh machines you can utilize in the game and stuff like that and but I, I think they need to they need to flesh it out a little bit more. They need new maps, you know what I mean, stuff like that. But I like the fact that you can have like specific characters with different abilities and stuff too. It's got kind of that apex vibe to it a little bit too, you know. <sighs> it's all right to jump into every once in a while, man. I'm glad you're enjoying it. We all know a new Switch console is in development, dude. The Last of Us Part 2 remaster leaked by Composer. Uh... Okay. Look, I'm sorry, but after what what happened with Last of Us Part One on PC, um, kind of feel like Naughty Dog can get wrecked right now, dude. And everybody will go, "Oh well, they're not the ones that did that, dog. That was like Iron, what was it, Iron Galaxy or something?" <laughs> yo, yo. What's up? Thanks for the raid, dude. What's up, Dutch Gamer? What's going on, buddy? Yo, thanks for the raid, buddy. Appreciate it, man. How are you, man? Um, was it Iron Galaxy that, that did uh, Last of Us Part 1? Life is going on? Nice, dude. Can't remember. Um, apparently, they've they've fixed the game up, but it's still all time fifty nine percent positive. Apparently, here recently, it's gotten better uh, over the past few months, but it's still unacceptable, dude. You know what I mean? Good for them for uh, fixing it up after it released, but uh, let me let me pull this up. It's still it's still unacceptable, dude. This is the thing I, I'm trying to get across, to people like. Who was it? I think it was Iron Galaxy. Iron Galaxy. Sure was. Iron Galaxy, dude. So uh, uh, apparently, uh, you know, and, and a lot of people say, well, I, you know, Naughty Dog didn't have anything to do with Iron Galaxy's fault or whatever. But look, dude, Naughty Dog contracted them to port this game to PC, and it was a hot flipping mess. It was totally broken. And they said, publish it anyways. They said, push it out anyways. And that falls on Naughty Dog, dude. So I don't care. You know, that falls on. It's a decent game. Yeah, nice, dude. Is that what you were playing? Is that what you were playing, dude? Yeah. Yeah, we've been watching it for a long time. Um, so uh, I'm excited to get in there and try it out. Oh, nice, dude. Cool, man. Cool. Nice, dude. All right. Um, yeah, we've been uh, we've been watching it for a long time through development. And I've said this a lot here recently and, you know, all these 
terrible AAA developers nowadays. They just release bad games all the time. I think Capcom still does a really solid job on the constant. And I'm excited to play it, dude. It looks like it's a lot of fun. Hoping to have some community members jump in with me and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, I don't know. Hopefully, it'll be a good time. Yeah. But we'll see what's up here, man. Um, I mean, I'm I'm anything from Naughty Dog PC moving forward, I'm gonna be kind of hesitant about because of what they did here. I mean, if they're legit the ones working on it and not contracting it out, maybe a little bit less hesitant, but it was still a very bad decision on their part. And they still didn't do their job in vetting the game and making sure that it was performing correctly before they released it. And that's their that's their job, dude. That's their fault. So I don't know. We'll read into this and see what's going on. Yeah, nice, dude. Nice. Good, dude. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, again, I think that the developers that show us that uh, we shouldn't have anything to worry about, you know, that's what I expect. It sucks that there are so many that give us those worries, though, you know? They put us in these situations where uh, i mean many of us anymore i mean we feel like we're just always on edge about whether a game's going to feel good or not on release anymore just overall because of the the bad state of games on release anymore but capcom tends to do a really good job dude they really do starfield is shorter than we thought what Texas Chainsaw Massacre gets a new brutal gameplay trailer. Cool. Take a look at that. We already have that up. Yeah. A lot of people excited about Baldur's Gate 3. Okay. Do we got a lot of a uh, lot of stuff this morning? Let's take a quick peek at our other search and see if there's anything else. Yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of info on the game. Again, we've been covering it for a long time, um, and uh, I have a pretty good idea of what to expect out of it. We've even watched like a thirty-minute, pretty detailed uh, showcase of the the game and everything too. So. I think I have a pretty good idea of what to expect out of it. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've never, I've never actually played Overwatch. I don't really do Blizzard games anymore. It's not a company that I'm, but I am familiar with Overwatch as well. So I do know what it is. We've we're actually covering Overwatch today also. <laughs> They've got a, uh, what, some, what they got a uh, tournament popping off today or something. Well, I mean, I've always said this too. Um, I've always said this too. I mean, if and here's the deal. I've 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 said this for a long time as well. You know, if if Microsoft uh, and it looks like they are finally going to be able to purchase Activision Blizzard, this could change the way that Blizzard feels to me. You know, I say this about every developer. You know, do I ever expect Blizzard to be the company that they were whenever I fell in love with them? You know, back in the day, no, absolutely not. But there's a lot of things that happened over the time of, you know, what went down with Blizzard, what, what's happened to Blizzard that, that's made me be very disenchanted with that company. Does it mean that they can't get back into my good graces for me to play games that they develop again? No, it, that's also quite possible. You know what I mean? But right now, no, I don't want to play their games. Does it mean that I won't play their games forever? No, that also doesn't mean that either. You know, um, so it just depends on how the company 
progresses moving forward, man. And I mean, and Wick, you say, what if Blizzard makes like the best game of all time one day? That's also a very uh, subjective kind of statement, dude. Because we all know that like everybody's best game of all time is, you know, different from each other individual's best. Game. I mean, there, there, there are people that agree and there are people that disagree for what the best game of all time is. You know what I mean? So you can't just say that, you know, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> well, I mean, it takes time, dude. It takes time. And from what I've seen from Blizzard, from the start of like Diablo 3 is where it went bad. And then everything that their, their business did, finding out about like the culture within that business, everything that was done poorly, the way they were treating their employees, then through Diablo Immortal being just a scummy pay to win kind of thing. Like that was recent, dude. You know what I mean? So, I mean, if I see a trend of bad, then I'm going to keep following. And the, the more, you know, scummy stuff I see, then it's not, you know, that's not getting me in the good graces, you know? So, I mean, it takes time. It's not like just doing one single good thing, right? Is. I, I, I can't even say if it, for me, Tears of the Kingdom is going, Tears of the Kingdom is going to be a lot of people's game of the year. I've acknowledged that. Can't say that, dude. I haven't played it. I haven't played it. It's going to be a lot of people's game of the year. I've said that. So it, it, I, I, it won't be mine. It won't be mine because I don't even know if I'll get it played this year. Um. But everybody's game of the year is everybody's favorite game of all time is different. And, and just because Blizzard makes it, I mean, right now, dude, they've got a banger out in Diablo 4, right? And it feels bad not to play it. I've said that from the get go. So I don't know um, if I see them do better moving forward. And yeah, I think Bobby Kotick would be a good step in the right direction. I don't think I think that individual should have been ousted from Blizzard a long time ago. Activision Blizzard should have gotten rid of Bobby Kotick a long time ago. Um, there's, I don't see how I any individual through all the crap that's gone on in that company that is the CEO should have been able to stay in that position, you know? Oh, Scorn, right? Oh, yay, nice, yeah. The price, yeah. For me, it's just that stance I have on Blizzard just being Blizzard. So, I don't know. Um, D4 looks cool. I'll wait for Path of Exile to, <laughs> you know what I mean? We've got, we've got a showcase happening this month, actually for Path of Exile 2. Um, when is that happening? July 27th, I think. So Path of Exile 2 has got a, an entire showcase coming at the end of this month, by the way. Um, and for me, I mean, as cool as Diablo 4 seems and, and looks, you know, I, I would still rather support uh, Grinding Gear games, even though they're now owned by Tencent over something like Blizzard. So that's just me, though, dude. And again, I, I think, you know, Wick's like, well, I still haven't I haven't seen you uh, a company get back in your good graces. That's because, I mean, building the trust back, building my building, build, me seeing a company fall out of grace right? A company falling out of grace with me because they've, uh, they've done something wrong to me or I've gotten jaded by a particular company. It's going to take a significant amount of time for me to see them do well to get back into my good graces, dude. Um, so, and it's not like I'm an immediately, like they do something wrong one time. I'm immediately going to boycott them, you know, like by it is for Blizzard for me. Blizzard had a lot of missteps for me to finally go, I'm not playing their games anymore. But it's like with From Software, they did a terrible job uh, with Elden Ring on PC. And I bought it day one, and I won't buy their games day one again. It's a, it's kind of like a progressive thing for me. You know what I mean? But if I continue to see them do bad stuff like that, then I'll get to a point where I probably, probably wouldn't play their games anymore. But if I see, like, like, they've got Armored Core 6 coming out. If they do a good job on Armored Core 6 release on PC, and it feels better then Elden Ring did release on PC, then that's progression, dude, not regression. And that's going to make them feel better for me and I'll feel more comfortable buying into their products and stuff like that moving forward. It's all a process, man. It's all a process.
Yeah, I mean that that was uh, that was a, a big misstep for a lot of people. Um, I mean, again, the, the, where I saw Blizzard go wrong was just I could tell Blizzard had degraded. Whenever I I stood in line at midnight, <laughs> got my collector's edition of Diablo three, played it, beat it and uninstalled it and went I probably will never play that game again. Whereas Diablo 1 and Diablo 2 were games that I like played non-stop forever it felt like. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I respect that opinion, dude. I'm not saying they don't do good things. I don't think they do great things. I I think that they still do some good things, but for me I haven't seen anything particularly to put them back in my good graces, dude. And the most recent thing, being Diablo Immortal, being so absolutely over-the-top scumbag pay-to-win is going to take a lot, dude. A lot to get me back in those good graces. Oh, they're great at making, <laughs> they're great at making money. Yeah, that's... Yeah. That's true. Well played, sir. Well played. You got me on that one. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Let's go. You flipping guys getting me ranting, dude. You know what to do. I'm pulling my flipping gamer heartstrings, you buttholes, man. <laughs> you could pay to fail. Well, yeah, and it wasn't even intentional, right? It was like... um they people had paid so much to get so high level to pay paid so much to win so high nobody could compete with them anymore so they were left in, a, in like this this area all by themselves where they didn't have anybody else to compete with right <laughs> it was wild <laughs> yeah no you guys are fine you're fine i need i got to get better at just like ignoring you <laughs> no i'm playing <laughs> I haven't ranted about uh, Blizzard in a while, I don't think. So it was probably due. <laughs> it was probably due. I got to get it out every once in a while, you know? It, it makes me feel cleansed. <laughs> oh, there it is, dude. Look how sad it makes me. Look how sad the Blizzard talk makes me, dude. It's so sad. It really does. It really is. Uh, I mean, for a company that was, God, such a huge part of me as a a young gamer, you know, it does feel bad seeing them turn into what they've turned into. It flipping hurts. And it hurts not to play D4. It does. Get through this. Let's get into these these segments. I think we got basically everything up. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of prime uh free games on Amazon Prime Gaming right now, dude. You need to go grab those if you've got Prime Gaming, okay? Easy. Oh yeah, and while we're on that topic, go get your uh the new free game which is uh on Epic. New free game is Train Valley 2. Uh shout out Ferret for letting us reminding us when this uh popped off yesterday. But uh, Train Valley 2 is now free, and uh, Murder by Numbers will be the, the free game next week, okay? So get your free titles. <clears throat> yep, Exoprimal is available today. We're going to be playing it. We talked about this yesterday. Oh, no, dude. Genshin Impact voice actors say they aren't getting paid. Want game unionized. Oh, geez. We'll hear more on this front, I'm sure. Starfield free Steam keys are already causing chaos. Nice. <clears throat> we already talked about this yesterday as well.
All right, let's get in this. Let's get in it. You saw that on Reddit? Yo. Reddit seems like your kind of place, Wick. I got to throw that out there. Reddit seems like your kind of place, dude. <laughs> you, you seem like you would thrive in Reddit, dude. In the, the trenches of Reddit, dude. <laughs> all right starfield is shorter than we thought um let's read these first uh if you were expecting starfield to be uh this endless game based on its size and how much content it has you may not be wrong but the upcoming bethesda game hitting xbox series x and pc later this year uh september 6th to be specific we're not that far away like two months dude less than uh, won't have a very long main campaign. According to creative director on the game, Todd Howard, the game has more main quests than previous games, which could pad out its uh, final hour content. Um, which apparently not set in stone yet. However, don't expect anything drastically longer than previous games from Bethesda Game Studios. Quote, this one's ending up a little bit longer than our previous games, and we may tune that some still, said Howard. It's more quests, so it might be 20% more than previous ones. Adding to this, Howard suggests the main story will be 30 to 40 hours long. If this ends up being true, then it's not much longer than Skyrim, which takes roughly 30 to 40 hours to mainline. In other words, they would be about the same length. Yet, Howard says it has more quests and would be 20% longer than previous ones. So, it's not obvious how all this adds up. Fallout 4 is 25 to 30 hours long to mainline. So, this makes sense. But in this context of Skyrim, it makes less sense. Whatever the case, wherever the game ends up in this ballpark, it's shorter than we anticipated. Size of Starfield, thanks to massive amounts of procedural generation, is way larger than previous Bethesda Game Studios games. As a result, we figure the main quest would be substantially longer to create the same balance between main content, side content, and miscellaneous content. But apparently this is not the case. Um, yeah, September 6th, $70, you guys know, PC, uh, Xbox. Um, here's the thing to keep in consideration, though. This game, because the universe is going to be so much bigger, there is the potential for the game to inherently take more time, um, just depending on how you play it, right? Uh, so, just a second, Wick, I'll read all that. So, um, not only that, but, it, you know, I think I think that... Even if, if they're saying the main quest line stuff might not be all that much longer than some of the other previous games we've seen from Bethesda, I think you have to take into consideration the universe that's being built here, that the size of that, what you can do to, you know, continue to play the game outside of main storyline stuff. And it's a Bethesda game. And we all know that that means mods. Right. So because Bethesda, you know, is very good at making games that allows uh, mods, there's a huge modding community around Bethesda games. This game is going to get a lot of additional content. And I guarantee you will get additional content from Bethesda. We'll get additional content from mod modders. It, it, there will be more even, I think, not in the not too distant future. Um even outside what the base game gives you, right? So it, it, it's not going to be short. I don't think that people need to worry about this game being short. And here's the thing. There's always got to be a balance. You don't want a game to feel too much. Like you're never going to be able to finish it, right? And I think that's where they're getting across that like, I don't think that's bad. I don't think it's bad that the main storyline is going to be like 40 hours, right? That doesn't mean that that's all the game's going to have to offer, though. So I think people need to relax, <clears throat> understand there's going to be a lot more to do in this game than just the main storyline, and it will be okay. You're going to get a lot of game time out of this game, I really... I think as long as it, it feels good, right... <laughs> We all know there's gonna we're gonna get Bethesda a little bit because that's what these games do. But as long as it feels pretty good, you know, then you're gonna get a lot of game time out of this game. I think so. I wouldn't worry that much. What are you saying, Wick? 
What kind of animal could you beat in a fight? I'm like, lion. I'd whoop, I'd whoop a lion. <laughs> God dang, dude. All right, Starfield free steam keys are clear, already causing chaos. Okay, here we go. Uh, they say that nothing in life comes for free, and while I don't know who they are, and would also argue that saying isn't strictly true, it might apply to this situation simply due to the amount of stress Starfield fans are under right now trying to get free steam codes. To say that Starfield is one of this year's most exciting video game releases. Okay. All right, right. <clears throat> it's already been confirmed that there's another way to get Starfield for the low, low price of nothing. Well, assuming that you, you were already planning on buying a new processor or graphics card for your PC anyway. Specifically, with the purchase of AMD Risen processors and AMD Radeon graphics cards from certain retailers, you'll get a Steam code for Starfield bundled in for free. Obviously, these bundles are pricey, given that the tech itself is very expensive, but if you were already thinking of upgrading your PC setup, it's a genuinely great bonus. However, on Reddit, there's already been some chaos surrounding this distribution of the bundled Steam keys. Some gamers claim to have had them added to their accounts already, <clears throat> ready to download when the game is available, whereas others have yet to have the offer acknowledged at all. Quote, confirmed that AMD bundle gives a Steam key. Steam key added to my rewards account, but they don't actually have them in stock yet. I bought a Risen 9 7900X on Tuesday. They haven't sent me my key yet. Another Reddit user commented, I bought uh, right after midnight early Tuesday. I haven't gotten it, but I'm sure it'll come. Still plenty of time to get this all sorted out. Here's hoping that those paying for those expensive bundles can get everything ironed out before Starfield's launch on six. Yeah, I mean, dude, there's like over, there's like what, seven weeks left, dude. There's plenty of time, dude. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Everything's okay. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. It's like seven weeks, dude. Which I think you get what early access. There's early access for certain versions, but it's probably just the base version that people are getting off of these AMD uh purchases i'm guessing so we'll see texas chainsaw massacre game gets a brutal new gameplay trailer next month texas chainsaw massacre will release offering a new take on the asymmetrical multiplayer horror genre unlike uh gun media's friday the 13th the game the publisher's next game is 3v4 with four survivors being stalked by three killers a new trailer for the game has now dropped it showcases just how brutal things will get when each killer manages to locate a survivor. Like the series itself, the trailer isn't for the squeamish, as we can see plenty of deaths in, as each killer catches up with their prey. The new trailer for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre can be found embedded below. Alright, hold on. Let's see this. Hold up, hold up. All right, mature, potentially sensitive content here. All right, so if you're squeamish, maybe don't watch, all right? You think this is a party? Can't count on no one around here. You're only making it harder on yourselves. Oh, generators, where have we seen that before? We slaughter barbecue. <laughs> oh, jeez, dude. To make it. Rip. Nice. Um, it'll be interesting to see if uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre can surpass previous games in the genre. The idea of having multiple killers is a really interesting one. It should provide a lot more tension than Friday the 13th. A lackluster killer in Friday the 13th can really hurt the overall experience, making things far too easy. Having three villains could allow the other two players to carry the weight a bit for the those less experienced, making things a bit uh, more even. It's also very fitting to the source material, as the survivors in the films had more to deal with than just Leatherface. Yeah. Uh, set to release August 18th on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, and S, and PC. And is getting a day one release on Game Pass. Nice. All right. Very cool. Here, I'll link it.
New Atlas Fallen gameplay video emerges from the sand. Let's take a look at this. I need more coffee. Holy crap. Get yourself some coffee. This is seven minutes long. We'll watch it. Um, I'm interested in seeing some uh, legitimate gameplay stuff here. But dude, I need coffee for this. One minute. Get yourself some coffee. I'll be right back. I don't even think that was a minute. And we got random mode up. Let's go. Everybody's got a higher chance to win right now. Only seven TV emotes are coming up for some reason. All right. We ready? We ready for this? Let's go. Atlas Spawn is an action RPG. <laughs> it's about That's comets, true. about fast-paced action fighting and using all your skills together to bring down cool big monsters. So I love to work on things that are like action adventure, where you can go into a completely new space, a new fresh land, and really get into the nitty gritty of exploring and finding hidden mysteries and being able to artistically uh, develop that even further. It's just so much fun to do. I am always very happy to be in this idea finding phase and then see how can we really turn it into a real game so that everything works as a whole. We thought, okay, we did sci-fi in the yeah, past, so yeah. let's explore um, fantasy. I've heard that. The world of Atlas is a unique medieval fantasy world. I can't where help but get for spoken vibes of off of mankind, it. And they really subdued Which all is a turn off for me. So you've you got begin like your journey as an unnamed the gauntlet thing, like she had the bangle, you've got like the, the movements of like your sand surfing, like, there are different like in the Forspoken character like did all the, uh, meet, the uh, parkour the stuff and everything. I don't know. The, I, I, I the catch the same kind of vibes uh, almost. Uh, the uh, um, there are similarities so anyways, I think. Um, and and, and that's a bit of a... I mean, totally different developers, publishers, all that stuff, but... ...through the kingdom. And they're pretty harsh uh, against. Oh, dude, the Magic Call of Duty game. Oh, them. God. Uh, why can't I think of the name of that right now? We have a great level design team who has really you. worked on trying to figure out how we could get this knowledge from the Surge games and bring it into um, this new, more fast-paced, movement-oriented world. The most interesting aspect of the world of Atlas Fallen is its scale and verticality. How can we make sure that the player cannot break out of our world while Immortals also ensuring avium, dude. that Immortals they have the grandest possible freedom go. in the way they move and explore? In order to find out all these things in the world, you have super special abilities. You have the sand gliding, which is basically like surfing down sand dunes and um, having really fast paced exploration. Cloud production, it became faster and faster yeah, man, yeah. because we noticed, oh, it's still fun. And it's even more fun if we just tune it up a bit more. I got you, bro. You also get to go to places that are completely preserved due to the world and how it is and hidden Wick, from the Wick, when are you gonna get a haircut, dude? So something that inspired me uh, during Atlas Fallen was Dune. It's really cool to see how Dune approaches sand. And what I found more interesting for me to explore with Dune as a base is to look at other fantasy titles. So going from Lord of the Rings to The Witcher and understanding how those worlds are constructed and then adding our visual twist. So taking real world examples of quarries and how sand over thousands of years would affect those states has been really interesting for us to explore. The sand is under our control. It carries us. We try to think out of the box that we have built for us and uh, make the levels bigger or the player character faster or the monsters more interesting. I think you can really find many things from our previous games in our gameplay mechanics and this was important for us. We like to preserve many things that, that we think are cool and that our people can do well and that players like. 
we decided to go with like different difficulty levels, but the essence we keep is the body parts, that you're able to target specific body parts of the enemy in order to have like a tactical angle to the combat. Like Monster Hunter. So we really wanted to make it. the fight be um, something that anyone can pick up and feel like they're doing fantastic things. They are like swinging the big axes. Really having immediate feelings and sensations of power. I believe it is quite easy to pick up at Last Fallen and start doing some things that people find cool. So the core of the combat system is what we call the momentum. When the momentum meter is full, you ascend it to the air and smash down on the enemy and just leave him in shatters. And that, for me at least, uh, it's super exciting. The Essence Stones are inspired by the implants. We decide here yeah, that the player will be able to tailor their playstyle and their moveset and will be unlocking progressively new moves, new abilities, passive and active, um, during the fight for the player. I think it feels like the game really has two core pillars. One is the combat, the fighting um, and the action, and one is the exploration of the game world. Something really cool that I hope players enjoy is getting to these high vantage points in the world and just looking out at what's in the horizon. It's going to be really fun to see how people interact with this and how deep they go into the exploration in Atlas. For such a grand game, um, having so much movement freedom is, I think, pretty unique. So there's a lot of um, choice for the player on how they can play the game and how they can engage with the world. You're completely free to do crazy things and to mix things that are maybe more weird to other players, but if you like that, then maybe it's your play style and you have some very special fun, uh, just do it. Co-op experience in Atlas Fallen is unique and so far that the game can be experienced from start to finish uh, almost seamlessly. But aside from that, everything is very flexible, hopping up off at any point of the game, any point of the story. They can join with a friend, drop out, continue in solo, continue with another friend. And that's what I think Atlas Fallen is really good at because since we have the co-op, like a more experienced genre player can come there to help out his friend. Three time, <laughs> so there's no, I don't. nothing that touches no, I don't. you I like my more hair. You don't like my the hair. voice. And so we recorded a choir in Sofia specifically. Oh, for real, Dutch Gamer? Yeah, you want to see Skylines too? Yeah, right thing. on, dude. Choirs can yeah. hardly be that. mimicked by technology. The intensity of yeah. the music changes within combat. So they the more intense the, the combat gets, that the more intense the music gets. My main job was to fill the world with sounds and with music, and I... I say sounds because it's all about sand, it's about essence, it's about this mystical world that you try to discover. My favorite I was aspect like, dude, I want that guy's heart. Is actually like that taking me back into cannibal status, and dude. Very, very agile way of Is that when it was hitting, it. really? Surf through it and, I didn't know they had a still, dedicated date yet. I thought it was like 2024. 20, that's really that's cool. news to me, dude. I hope or I just everyone forgot. really enjoyed what? the game. We put all of our heart into it. We took a lot of risk again, tried to do new things. Interesting. And I hope um, oh, in nice, the end, people will feel nice, the passion dude. we put in this project. Yo, cool. And Thanks, enjoy. Dutch. Appreciate that, man. I yeah. hope players really enjoyed the exploration of the game and really cool, enjoy the fast-paced action that they have. let me know how you feel about it, especially in comparison to uh, City Skylines, the original, you know. Oh, is it really? Oh, nice, dude. Sick. That's cool. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm not, I'll be honest. I'm not real hyped about this. I know a lot of people, there are, there are an amount of people that have some, some, uh, hype about playing this and everything. Um, it doesn't look bad. I hope it's good for me. It's just not hitting for me as something that really looks super interesting to play. Yeah. Yeah, Ferret, you you digging it, dude? Yeah. So, uh, Atlas Fallen has the looks of an epic double-A title, something we don't get a lot of in gaming anymore. Focus Entertainment has done a lot in that space. Today showed us more of the sand-covered Forbidden Land. Um... They uh they are the ones that did the surge and the the, the surge was um good from what I understand. If you don't know what the surge is, this is the surge. 
So, um, and actually, our buddy Tinwin keeps prompting me to play this. The second one's supposed to be better than the first one, I think. It's actually on sale Maybe right now, I think. Yeah, big sale, dude. Yeah, check it out. Um, so, The Surge, um, the first one was okay, I think. Um, and it, it's Souls-like action RPG. It's, it's sci-fi. It's futuristic, kind of, you know, lots of tech big chunky action you know what i mean uh the surge 2 was supposed to be better from what i understand um from from a lot of people's perspective you'll have to look at the metacritics on them and stuff 76 right there okay yeah dutch yo thanks for the uh raid buddy appreciate it man it doesn't have the crazy price point yeah i mean you got to respect that right so um i don't know if you want a bit of a a uh I'll look at nice something neighbor. else that they've done, Deck 13, the developer, right? Then maybe take a look at the Surge. These games are on sale right now. You can get the bundle. Uh, less than 10 bucks on Steam right now for the Surge 1 and 2. And uh, you go check out their Metacritic. Again, I don't think these are going to be games that necessarily blow you away, but they're supposed to be pretty entertaining. Yeah. So uh, go take a look at the Surge. Here, let's go back to the, our library real quick so we don't pop off with something crazy there. Um, so that, that could give you a, a nice little <clears throat> preview if you played the surge as to what you might be able to expect from, uh, Atlas Fallen. Okay. Um, I'll link this for you guys. A again, I don't, I don't think the game looks bad or anything. It's just not something that necessarily, uh, like piques my interest real hard, you know, but if anybody plays it, I mean, uh, Please let me know what you think about it. We've just got a lot of other stuff on the schedule that's a bit more interesting to me than uh, getting this in there, I think. The Last of Us Part 2 remaster leaked by Composer. All right. Here we go. So, a remaster of The Last of Us Part 2 may have just been leaked by the series' composer. The Last of Us series is one of the biggest franchises in gaming right now. Coming so success successful that it was able to exist beyond the games. Earlier this year, HBO released its adaptation of the game via the first season of its new TV series, which is garnering all kinds of praise, including Emmy nominations. It's a huge success and will likely continue to get a ton of love when it inevitably drops the second season a couple of years from now. With that said, fans are also eagerly awaiting the multiplayer spinoff for the series and hopefully The Last of Us Part 3. Fans may get another Last of Us related project in the meantime, though. In a recent Spanish interview series, composer Gustavo Santelolala was told by an interviewer that they loved seeing him as a character in the game. Um, and Gustavo can be found in Jackson at the start of The Last of Us Part Two, playing a banjo outside of one of the buildings with a dog standing near him. It's about as far as the interaction goes, but that may change. Gustavo told the interviewer, that in a new version of the game, players will be able to go up to his in-game character and request songs for him to play. However, he noted he can't say anything beyond that. Mm. With that said, it seems like a remaster of The Last of Us Part Two may be on the way. The first game was recently remade for PS5 and PC, but it also it's also 10 years old. It was also a hot piece of crap. <sighs> Naughty Dog does good stuff, but Naughty Dog has got to figure out how to be better about making sure that like their ports if they're going to be remastering games and stuff like that um it's of the same quality as what they're pushing out originally because that that's not gonna fly dude um it's also 10 years old it's unlikely the second game is getting a full-blown remake since it came out in 2019 already looks amazing but it may get a new version native to ps5 that can also go on pc there's also a chance that um, Santo Leal, Santo Lala, Santo Lala slipped up and was talking about a cameo in the multiplayer spinoff or the third game, but we'll have to wait and see. All right, whatever the case may be, it was a pretty, uh, it was a pretty big misstep in my opinion from Naughty Dog on what they did with The Last of Us Part One. But hopefully, it's a learning. That's all you could ask, right? Let it be a learning experience from that developer. And um, hopefully it won't happen again. Everything else they've done has been pretty solid from what I've seen. But that was a pretty big misstep there. I hated to see that. 
What is Naraka Blade Point? Don't sleep on the new Battle Royale game dropping on PS5. If you're searching for a fast-paced Battle Royale game for the PlayStation 5, look no further than the latest release from 24 Entertainment, Naraka Blade Point. The title, which has sold more than 6 million copies worldwide, has seen a timed release on each platform to which it has appeared. Naraka Blade Point originally released for Windows in August of 2021, then Xbox Series X and S in June of last year, to Xbox One in December of last year as well. And is now on PS5. There's also a mobile version of the game currently in development. The gameplay incorporates a melee and ranged attacks with the mechanics and aesthetic being inspired by Sekiro and Devil May Cry. Um, <clears throat> mixed reviews with some positive feedback. Uh... IGN gave it an 8 out of 10. Metacritic is 71 out of 100. PC Gamer is 73 out of 100. Um, despite somewhat middle-of-the-road response to the title, it's seen a great deal of popularity and at one point had more than 120,000 players online at the same time. Um, they have a, a video of this. Let's Let's find a video of this real quick so we can see it. But I think it hit free to play, right? I'm pretty sure it hit free to play. Um, yeah, it's free to play now. Let's just look at their their website real quick. So that's what I had heard. Uh, free to play. It has now gone free to play. This is like a quick little show of like gameplay and stuff. Give you a, a taste of like what you have melee and ranged and everything it looks like. That's old, that's old. Should have just gone to YouTube. Eight hours ago? Uh, here we go. Let's check this out. Here's the gameplay showcase for the uh, PS5 drop. I do remember seeing some stuff about this game like over a year ago, man. My bad. Yep. So there you go. Naraka Blade Point is now free to play and on PS5. So 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it looks like it could be cool. I don't know, man. Uh, here you go. Here you go, Farrah. Here's, here's your jam, dude. Sociopathic Destiny 2 player to pay Bungie 373,000 pounds in damages. Um, Comer has never denied his intent to terrify the victims. Bungie goes hard, guys, and I love it. Bungie does not mess around. They don't pull punches. They destroy everybody that tries to take them on as a business or affect their communities or their gameplay, their software, anything, man. It's great. A Destiny 2 player who targeted one of the game's community managers with a tirade of racist abuse must pay 373,424 pounds in damages and fees to Bungie per the official Washington State Court order. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, I knew that's what we were going to read about, but... Uh, according to the ruling, which was shared by paralegal Catherine Tucson on Twitter, West Virginia resident Jesse James Comer became incensed when the community manager shared Destiny 2 artwork from a black content creator. According to the court documents, Comer used an uh, anonymizing texting and calling service to uh, send a hideous, bigoted voicemail to the community manager's personal phone. The player reportedly asked that the employee convince Bungie to create options in its game, which in which only persons of color would be killed. Jeez. Before targeting the community manager's partner with further racism. Uh, Tucson described the acts as sociopathic conduct, while court documents state Comer engaged in a carpet bombing of racist text and voice messages. Once he worked, uh, worked out where the community manager and their partner lived, Comer ordered a virtually inedible odiferous pizza from Domino's, uh, chose payment on delivery, for the order and asked that the delivery driver knock at least five times on their door. As the abuse escalated, uh, Bungie undertook expensive measures to look out for the employee's mental and physical safety. Executive protection um, was assigned to the community manager's house. Local police were aware of the risk and private investigators were deployed to confirm the identity of the employee's harasser. Comer has never denied his intent to terrify the victims and by extension Bungie because they did the job Bungie asked them to do by promoting the contributions of a black creator to Destiny 2, stated the ruling. Indeed, immediately after this lawsuit was filed, he stipulated to an interim injunction that all but admitted his intent and his involvement. The player decided not to attend the ruling. Ultimately, Comer must pay a total judgment of 373424 pounds or... Uh, Converted to 489,435 cents uh, in U.S. dollars to Bungie with interest increasing that sum at a rate of 12% per year until it's paid in full. <laughs> Furthermore, there is now a, pay, a permanent injunction against any contact between Comer and Bungie, its employees, and any member of the Destiny 2 community. Fantastic. That's great. <laughs> Yo, this is uh this is what should be happening, you know. Um, so we talk quite often, you know. Uh, I bring up the fact that for some reason there are uh a small I I I I think it's just a small population of gamers that feel like it's their prerogative to take it upon themselves to act these ways attack companies and their employees show up at people's um you know places of employment or show up at their actual permanent residence and in you know incite these kinds of like uh abuse whether it be you know psychological or, or physical or sometimes abuse you know and um Quite often, I mean, look, I talk about it a lot too. The internet is a very toxic place inherently because people feel like, you know, that they, they, uh, they've they got the an anonymity that that is what the internet provides people, right, by default. And it, it makes people get into this mindset that like they can get away with stuff and they won't be caught. Most people aren't smart enough to not get caught. They're not careful enough to not get caught if they actually go too far, right? And so it's great to see people get throttled like this. 
Um, there's no excuse for this. There's no reason why anybody should be doing this kind of stuff. And it's uh, absolutely unacceptable. And it's great to see a company go to these lengths to protect their employee and to oust uh, somebody doing this kind of harassment and um, abuse to their employee too. Um, so good on Bungie. I say this all the time. I love Bungie as a developer, not just because of like what they do software wise, but because of what they, they do to protect their, their company, their employees, their software, their communities. Um, they don't mess around, dude. If you come at Bungie, get ready to get melted, dude. Be ready for it because they are going to hit you, dude. It, we see it all the time, dude. I don't know why anybody would still come at Bungie at all. Right. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Who sneezed? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. It was the elf, dude. It was L. Yeah, yeah. This is good stuff, dude. I love this. It's great. Go Bungie, dude. Tune into the Overwatch League Summer Stage Qualifier starting today. Over all you Overwatch fans, the league is after uh, the Atlanta Rain as they uh, establish themselves as at the top of the league. Uh, they don't have to wait long as the Summer Stage Qualifiers are currently underway. Running from July 13th through the 16th, teams will battle it out on the Overwatch League's YouTube channel, which is linked right here. Okay, you can see uh, the schedule. That was set it from the start. That was July 3rd. That started yesterday. This is a July 14th schedule. So um, if you're interested in watching some of this uh, Overwatch tournament stuff, here it is. Heard the elf sneeze. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was the elf. Hmm? He's uh he, he's actually in a little uh like hamster wheel. He's keeping my uh my my PC powered, but every once in a while, you know, all the dust that's flowing through the PC and everything, yeah, you know, makes him sneeze. He'll be fine. Uh, conform to your genre with the new specialty control freaks. Um, we all have specific games we play, but sometimes it feels like everyone else gets the best accessories. The teams over at Steel Series and Control Freak don't feel that way at all, and they're providing you the best options no matter how you play. One of the ways uh, that is being accomplished is by a great new line of genre-specific Control Freak thumbsticks. You can literally find everything covered from e from sports to shooters to fighting games. Find your fit to fight your fight via the links below. Let's see this real quick. Bow, 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 bow. Yeah, they're like just little like caps for the joysticks and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um Say it helps to improve experience, gameplay by increasing range of motion, comfort, uh exceptional grip and control while delivering maximum precision. Variety of heights to original stock controller sticks for increased arc distance and precision. Um, reduced amount of force required for movements. Decreasing hand fatigue and improving accuracy. I have never enjoyed any of these uh, caps I've ever used. Um, they do. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's... Uh, personally... I've I've never found any as comfortable as just a regular joystick. I don't know why. Maybe I just haven't used them enough to get comfortable with them or something. But um, or I just haven't had quality, uh, good quality enough ones or something. But this is uh, if if you feel like you need like an elevated height on a joystick or maybe a little bit more grip or whatever, you know, then um, you know maybe take a look at, at giving these a shot. These look like some pretty quality uh, adapters for joysticks. So take a look at it. Yeah, I mean, I've I've very you know quickly just 
tried some random ones out and stuff and it just feels weird but i'm not a big controller fan anyways you know i mean i'm a mouse and keyboard guy also so who knows man maybe maybe for like people that are primarily like controller users it's uh a bit nicer i don't know that's what we just read ferret oh yeah we just read that yep Teams over is still series and control freak. Yep. But thanks for pointing it out, man. Straight Gods has changed its release date to avoid Boulder Gate 3, which is probably pretty smart, which changed its release date to avoid Starfield. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, David uh, Guider's musical RPG Stray Gods is delayed and it's all Todd Howard's fault. Uh, look, I mean, we talk about this a lot, right? It's like um, the uh, there are a number of games that come out every year that, that you know, a lot of developers and publishers will avoid at all costs, uh, avoid releasing around the same time period. Um, and this year you're talking about things like uh, Tears of the Kingdom. You're talking about, I mean, Boulder's Gate 3 is, is one. The difference being that like, it's been out in early access on PC, but it, it's releasing on PS5 as a, a, a game that people haven't been able to access on PS5. Now, the dates are different for the PS5 release and the, the PC release because they're avoiding... Boulder's Gate is avoiding the Starfield release because Starfield's another one of those games that developers and publishers want to avoid, right? But like last year, you know what I mean? It was like Elden Ring, you know, and and um, there are more, but there there are just a handful of games every year that publishers and developers try to avoid, right? And here we here we go with, um, you know, Stray Gods, which looks like it could be pretty cool. Wick won't like it because it's going to require uh, timing with music and everything, right? And we know how he does with that. But that's neither here nor there. And um, basically what this comes down to is that this game is going to have to be, um, it's going to be delayed, right? Um, so Stray Gods announced today, this was probably yesterday, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Stray Gods is getting delayed from August 3rd to August 10th, so it doesn't get murdered by Boulder's Gate 3. Yeah, so... Um, again, Boulder's Gate 3 is releasing August uh, 3rd on PC, but it's still releasing September 6th on PS5, right? Um, we want everyone to have ample space to check out Stray Gods when it launches. The studio said Boulder's Gate 3 is uh, hotly anticipated by us too, and we want to give our fans room to celebrate Stray Gods. Quote, we also want everyone to be able to play on their preferred device at launch. This is a huge undertaking for any team, let alone any indie shipping its first title. This extra week allows us to have performance parity as, it, as close as possible across every platform. It's a little unusual for a studio to straight up acknowledge that it's purposefully avoiding a bigger game. Like we don't all know that that's what's happening most of the time anyways, but, but not, not uh, unprecedented. When Grinding Gear Games paused the release of Path of Exiles 3.13 in-game expansion, it explicitly stated that we do not want to put our players in a position of having to choose between Path of Exile and Cyberpunk, implicitly acknowledging that for the most people, it, would really, it wouldn't really be much of a choice, unfortunately, because Path of Exile, I mean, obviously most people looking back on it, Path of Exile deserved way more um, traffic than Cyberpunk did. Uh, right. I mean, Cyberpunk was a, was a f big, terrible, flipping mess. Rockfish Games made the same admission when it pushed back Everspace Two. What makes this case different and particularly funny, though, is that Baldur's Gate Three changed its own release date. Yeah, to avoid Starfield. We've talked about that. Um. So, 
This is their announcement. We're so excited. Stray Gods is under a month away. We're counting the days, and we know you are too, but we need to make a slight adjustment to the calendar. We're moving our launch date to August 10th. We, uh, we want everyone to have ample space to check out Stray Gods when it launches. Baldur's Gate 3 is hotly anticipated by us too, and we want to give our fans room to celebrate Stray Gods. So that's what everybody needs to know. Stray Gods is being pushed back about a week to uh, August 10th, all right? That's what you need to know. I'll link it. Um, lots of games reduced by 90% in the Xbox Ultimate Game Sale. So there are over 700 games included in the Ultimate Sale right now, and that obviously means we've got a few titles that have been discounted by up to 90%, re representing incredible deals on some truly great games. For example, the likes of Injustice 2, Middle Earth, Shadow of War, NBA 2K23, The Crew 2, Werewolf, The Apocalypse, Earthblood are all less than $6 on Xbox right now. Um, a couple of these are also on Game Pass, but even if you're a subscriber, you still might want to add these games to your library permanently. Um, you'll find all the 90% Xbox Ultimate Game Sale discounts in the table. We've also highlighted some 80% and 85% discounts below. Don't forget to check out some of the other Ultimate Sale roundups elsewhere on Pure Xbox. So you can see they've got a huge list, dude. Uh, uh, all the 90% off games. 8-Bit, Armies, Hordes, Invaders, Adam's Venture, Air, uh, Agents of Mayhem, Albedo, Arkanoid, ATV, Drift and Tricks, Bounty Battle, Buildings Have Feelings 2, Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition, Defunct Dog Duty, Duke Nukem 3D 20th Anniversary. Let's go. Uh, LA Episode 1, Flashback, Hapiko, Injustice 2, Middle Earth Shadow of War, NBA 2K23, Nickelodeon Kart Racers, Off-Road Racing, Reu Reuse, uh, Scribble Knots Showdown, Solo, Islands of the Heart, Street Outlaws, The List, Sublevel Zero Redux, Tango Fiesta, The Crew 2, the Crew 2 Special Edition, Werewolf the Apocalypse, uh, Earthblood, Whoopo, and XCOM 2 Collection. Dude, nice one right there to end on. And then 85%, uh, some notable 85% offs are Borderlands 3, Deus Ex Mankind, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Far Cry 5, Just Cause 3, XXL Edition, Lego DC Super Villains, Middle Earth Shadow of War, Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, Saints Row 4 Re-Elected, Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition, Soul Calibur 6 Deluxe Edition, Tekken 7 Definitive Edition, Watch Dogs Legion, and Wolfenstein 2 New Colossus. Uh, then there's 80% off, and the site's going to have even more sales than that. So this will at least get you guys started if you want some sales on Xbox, all right? There you go. Okay. Microsoft and Activision weigh sell of some UK cloud gaming rights, Bloomberg reports. They're trying to get this done. They want to get this, uh, now that FTC is kind of out of the way for the time being, they've got a small window to get the the actual purchase of Activ Activision Blizzard done before the FTC has a chance to uh, appeal the decision and get another case opened up, right? Um so Microsoft and Activision Blizzard are considering giving up some of their control of their cloud gaming business in the UK to appease regulators so they can complete their $69 billion merger. The deal, the largest in the history of video gaming, was also struggling in Britain until this week. Britain's Competition and Markets Authority, which had opposed the transaction, said on Wednesday, a restructured deal between Microsoft and Activision Blizzard could satisfy its concerns subject to a new investigation. So it could involve the cloud-based market rights for games in the UK to telecommunications, Gaming or internet-based computing, computing company, the Bloomberg report said, citing people familiar with the matter. A private equity company might also be interested, according to the report. Federal Trade Commission had requested a temporary halt to the deal, but a U.S. court on Thursday reje rejected the request. Microsoft and Activision did not immediately respond to Reuters' request for comment. Um, yeah, the two U.S. companies had agreed to a dead deal deadline of July 18th, with Microsoft liable to pay a $3 billion breakup fee if it fell through. Still, with the larger $69 billion deal back on track, the two sides are now focused on modifying the deal to obtain regulatory approval. So kind of what we read yesterday, again, is what I was just talking about, is they're trying to get this UK thing done so they can just be totally finished, get the deal legally completed, and Microsoft can own Activision Blizzard. What I understand from what I read yesterday was that the FTC is trying to uh, appeal the, the decision 
uh, that was just made to allow Microsoft to proceed with the uh, purchase of Activision Blizzard. And the only thing now uh, presenting an obstacle is the the uh, UK regulatory committee. Uh, so if Microsoft and Activision Blizzard can get past this UK obstacle, then they've got a small window of time before the FTC will be able to uh, complete its appeal and get another court date set. And if the purchase can happen before that, then it's done. And the FTC won't be able to really appeal any of it. It's, it's all, it'll already be finished, but it'll be a small window of time. That's just kind of what I was reading yesterday. I don't know how, you know, I don't know how all of this works, but um, that's the impression I was getting. And it means that they could potentially have like a window of like Monday and Tuesday to finalize this acquisition as long as they get the UK stuff completed uh, before the FTC can get their uh, appeal approved and get a, a like appeal court date set. So we'll have to see how it plays out over this weekend, man. Um, here we go. Uh, this is probably going to be kind of the same article. Uh, both of these are going to be covering the same thing, but uh, if anybody has anything else to add, let me know. We'll address it. We'll touch on it before we move on and start playing Exo Primal uh, today. Testing out the new Capcom game, man. We'll have some fun with that. But let me know if you have anything to add, and we'll uh, we'll take a look at it before we move on. Okay. Cloud gaming platform AntStream Arcade brings over 1,000 retro games to Xbox. It's the first third-party game streaming service on Xbox. This is um, one of those 10-year deals that they signed, I'm pretty sure. Uh, AntStream Arcade is offering over 1,300 retro game titles on Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S, with notable titles such as Space Invaders, Metal Slug, and Bubble Bobble. The company says these titles will be playable instantly without additional downloads or installation via its cloud gaming platform. With more titles being added every week, this is notable as AntStream will be the first third-party game streaming service on Xbox. The service will support cloud-based game saves, an online scoreboard, and the ability to pick up your game from multiple devices. AntStream Arcade is already available on Mac, PC, Linux, Android TV, Fire Stick, and Samsung TVs, but this marks the first time it is coming to a game console. AntStream says that it is using its unique technology to mod original games, allowing the company to create new mini-game challenges for both new and returning players. For example, you could play a modified Pac-Man map where the main objective is to avoid collecting the dots. Players will be able to enter tournaments, challenge other players to duel, or compete for the highest score. Um, Microsoft already has its own Xbox Cloud gaming streaming service, and that's available as a native app on Android, Windows, Samsung, Smart TVs, and select VR headsets. Also available on iOS and Mac, but you need to use a web browser to access it. Though Xbox Cloud gaming is more focused on modern uh, playing modern titles away from your console, uh, while AntStream Arcade is solely focused on tugging those nostalgic heartstrings. Um... AntStream Arcade on Xbox will be available for pre-order starting today on Xbox Store. Pricing will start at $30 annually with a one-time lifetime purchase option for $80. The company says all future games and new features will be included regardless of which purchase option you decide to go with. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah. This gives you a lot a look at a lot. Look, dude, Clay Fighter, Earthworm Jim, Samurai Showdown, dude. Um, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff, man. Holy crap. Yeah, this is all just about Antstream Arcade stuff again. So um that's pretty wild, man. Double Dragon. Lots of cool games on there, man. Lots of cool games. I'll link them both. That way, if you guys are interested. You'll have the info you need to get into AntStream Arcade. All right. Uh, that's the jam, dude. That's the jam. That emote explosion. Uh, you guys rock. Appreciate you. Happy flipping Friday, man. It's Friday, baby. We did it. Uh, the weekend's upon us. I hope everybody's had a good week so far. I hope your Friday's going well. Um... We're going to move on, dude. We're going to try out Exo Primal now. We'll have some fun. Hopefully, we'll get some community members that will uh, be able to jump in here and, and play around and uh, enjoy the game with me. But uh, we're going to play it, and we're going to 
get a taste of what the game has to offer and uh, we'll have some fun today man so if anybody's checking out this video gaming news segment now or potentially later as a VOD either on YouTube or Twitch we've got all our previous video gaming news segments we've got clips from news segments we've got gameplay playthroughs uh, as well as funny clips and highlights and stuff like that that uh, from all of our, our streams we've done that are in playlists both on a YouTube channel and uh, here on the Twitch channel as well that uh, everybody can check out. If you like the content, man, then uh, come hang out with myself and the rest of the amazing people that are part of our community here. Whenever we go live at 6 a.m. Uh, CST, six days a week. Uh, Wednesday's off right now, but uh, every other day of the week, we start off at... Uh, Around 6 a.m. CST, we kick it off. We always begin with video gaming news, and then we dive into uh, whatever gameplay we have planned for the rest of the day, man. And uh, we'd like to have more cool peoples come be a part of what we do, man. So, um, I don't know. Other than that, happy Friday. Stay healthy, stay safe, be kind to one another. And we will catch everybody tomorrow for July 15th edition of Video Gaming News. All right?